Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for blade lovers to learn about knives and hear from the makers, manufacturers, and reviewers that make the knife world go round. I'm Bob DeMarco, and coming up, a new one from Paul Munko and Kaiser. I am reunited with some childhood weapons. And then we take a look at my Thanksgiving road trip knives. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. Uh, my favorite comment from this past week was from Andrew Robertson, and this was on one of my um, one of my shorts. I've been doing a lot of shorts, and uh, on this one, I was talking about my bedside sword, and uh, his comment was, "Well, this is my moped rifle, and this is my springtime karambit. There are many like them, but these ones are mine." And I love that. I read that, and it just cracked me up because uh, obviously he's taking a piss, as the uh, as the Brits would say. Uh, g giving me some uh, some good razzing on my my categories, my topics for my shorts, like bedtime sword and favorite autumn Bowie and this kind of thing, favorite favorite car knives. Um, so I appreciate the razzing, and we all have our little idiosyncrasies, like my shower knives. I've learned from my shower knives short that a lot of people keep a knife in the shower. I guess a lot of people saw Psycho, so uh, they want to they want to keep that at bay. So. Thank you, Andrew Robertson, for your comment and for watching. And thank you, one and all, for watching and participating. I love the comments, and uh, I've been uh, I've been on top of them, and I've been responding because uh, I love the conversation that results. Uh, so thank you, one and all. Uh, I think now it's time to get to a pocket check. So today I've been carrying in my front right pocket the venerable and most awesome Les George Knives VSEP. Now this knife was one of, this was my grail knife for quite a long time. Uh, and then I ended up scoring it uh, on a aftermarket sale from a gentleman in Singapore, I remember. And it was a very dramatic sale for me because the guy was great. And he said, uh, this is going to take four weeks to get to you. And to the day, it took four weeks. But I got to say, I was biting my nails the whole time because I, I spent a good amount of money on it. And uh, I, you know, I was just taking a chance. But these are these were hard to find at the time. This, I believe, is a... Now, help me out in the comments. What version is this? Now, this is not the clip that goes with this knife. This is a uh, a later clip from Les George, but the one, the original one that comes on it is the spoon clip. So I don't know if this is the first, second, third generation. I know it's one of the older ones, uh, but do let me know if you know, help me out there. Uh, but I was carrying this today. This has a razor sharp edge uh, done by some sort of wicked edge type um, consistent angle sharpener. The guy did a great job on it. This was in my front right pocket. I love the smooth hydraulic feel of this knife opening and closing is such a pleasure uh you know we go on and on about the uh flippers on bearings and the and the drop shuttiness and that is a pleasure and you can get this knife in that configuration he makes a wonderful flipper version of this uh but there is something to that old school on washers smooth bearing uh opening and um well this this fulfills that in spades. Uh, next up, my uh, slip joint today was the Cyborg Jack. I've been hooked on this knife. Um, I'm going to open it right here. This uh, has all of the uh, function and fit and finish of the Jack Wolf knives, but with a more uh, futuristic handle style with those angles. Very, very ergonomic. Uh, on first blush, you might think, oh, that's not comfortable because I see angles and uh, points and such. Uh, but in hand, it is a dream. So it not only looks cool, it feels great. You can see how the handle curves to nestle into my palm. There's a slight curve on this uh, portion from the tip of the clip to the um, apex of the handle of the um, spine of the handle there. It's a slight gentle curve. 
and it makes that knife seat in the hand so nicely. And then this uh, uh, short straightaway and this long straightaway at the ang at an angle just fits the hand great. You know, um, these Jack Wolf knives follow have followed a very traditional have followed very traditional patterns, uh, but on certain knives like the the dog leg jack the canine and uh the gunstock jack the sharpshooter and here with the cyborg jack there's been a special attention uh paid to ergonomics uh by ben belkin uh, designer and proprietor of jack wolf knives and man i think he's really I, I like it when he focuses on ergonomics he's made me rediscover the gunstock jack and the and the ergonomics of that and made me like the dog leg jack, which I never cared for until I got his in hand. So uh, hats off to Jack Wolf Knives and loving this cyborg jack. That's an awesome blade. Of course, M390 and a full height hollow grind and just a beautiful shape, man. That long. It reminds me a little bit of a Lanny's clip, but fully flat ground. Awesome. Or fully uh, hollow ground. Uh, and on my belt uh, in the waistband, I had the Kramer Custom Knives Voodoo. I have been carrying my uh, my two well, mostly my um, my ruffian by Hogtooth Knives. Been in a honeymoon phase with that, and I basically uh, came back from the honeymoon today with the Kramer Custom Knives. I love this knife, and I want to make it a priority to get another knife from Eric Kramer, especially one of his Grinches. I want to get a Grinch XL dagger. Whoa! If you're not following him on Instagram, and you like. Uh, everyday carry fixed blade knives you do have to check out kramer custom knives that's eric kramer not robert kramer the uh the the kitchen knife maker also a great maker but uh, this is eric kramer man i love this knife nice and thin so easy to carry perfect sheath by the way perfect sheath uh, and this is how it ships with the discrete carry uh concepts clip there and uh, fully hollow ground i had him double edge this and so you get that sort of oblique back cutting uh swedge there for splitting cuts and tearing gouging cuts um you know back cuts kind of things he calls it a persian uh, persian knife i call it a clip point knife but he's the maker so he should know love that thing was carrying that today for the first time in a little while and uh carries like a dream and then last up for emotional support today, my emotional support knife was the uh, Buffalo Tooth by Finch, uh, Finch Knives. I absolutely love this knife. Uh, it is in Coca Bolo. This is my favorite, um, my favorite version of this knife. This was sent to me by Finch Knives, and um, I don't know how they knew. I guess maybe uh, uh, they didn't, <laughs> and it was a lucky, uh, just a, a luck of the draw thing or if they remembered our conversations, uh, but I absolutely love wood on traditional style knives and uh, also bone and other natural materials. And so they sent this to me uh, to check out and they sent the wood one. And I, I just find this to be the epitome of a gentleman's knife, even though it's really broad and not super light. And uh, that is titanium, by the way, in the past I've said that steel, that is a titanium. Um, bolster lock and it just looks beautiful sitting next to whatever knife I'm carrying uh, on a on a desktop with my leather wallet and my watch you know it's one of those EDC shots that you see at the end of the day when you take uh, all your stuff off and put it in a pile I don't know I love this knife for that reason but also that super broad uh saber ground blade now this one when i first got this i prepared a whole salad using this blade i remember um we were cooking and and uh i had just gotten this i cleaned off the blade and i was like let me see how how this does with cucumbers and i ended up preparing the entire salad uh, using this knife so this is a great cutter great slicer and uh has great action so love me some finch knives and really really dig the buffalo's tooth all right, that's what I was carrying. What did you have on you today? Let me know. Put it uh, in the comments below. I love uh, getting ideas or just uh, thinking about knives that I don't that I don't carry, and oftentimes that leads to me uh, getting the very same knife. So let me know what you were carrying today. I want to show you something cool. So I just came back from Thanksgiving holiday, and 
got some really cool stuff. Okay, so <laughs> it's going to sound gruesome, uh, but when when I was there, you know, my parents are not sheepish about knowing that they are nearing. You know, they're in the senior, they're in the winter of their lives. Uh, let me say, and my dad said, uh, "You got to go up into the attic and do some pre mortem clearing out. To, uh, pick, you know, pick some of your grandfather's pottery." And and my mom, you know, was 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 urging the same. But I found the term pre-mortem clearing out to be both funny and a little disconcerting but i like that my parents are not you know can can laugh about stuff um anyway uh so i came back with a lot of cool things and i'm going to show you you some of those uh in a minute with the state of the collection but my brother gave me something really cool knowing that i'm a micarta lover he got me this uh my brother it is a collector of world war ii ephemera uh, and here, I'm going to hold this in the other camera here. Uh, he's a, he's a collector of World War II helmets from all, uh, all sides and other cool stuff. And he got me this because it is all made of micarta. Now this is the liner of a World War II U S service helmet. And, um, it's unfinished. It was being made at the end of the war. The war ended and it was never finished. Ordinarily, uh, this liner would have uh, webbing and a, and a, a uh, webbing and a net so that it fits snugly on the wearer's head. And then this locks into the outer shell, which is made of steel, which is made of steel, I believe. Um, and it was just never finished because the war ended. But this inner lining, which is tough and yet flexible, is made of micarta. So uh, if you're watching, you can see that this is made of strips. It looks like paper mache. It looks like a uh, almost like a kid's project uh, for school. You can see the, the fabric and how it's cut and just cut roughly. But it all comes into this really smooth shape. So uh, my brother Vic got this for me. I, I think it's a really cool example of, uh, well, of a piece of history and kind of unfinished history, uh, but it's also a, a use of micarta that is not knives that I think is really interesting. Now, incidentally, this is made by uh, the Mine Safety Appliances Company, just like uh, in making their K-Bar, in, in, in making the combat knives uh, for World War II, uh, they were the design was licensed to a bunch of different knife makers same thing with the production of helmets and everything else so uh, this uh, mine safety appliances uh, that makes mine safety gear for mining uh, did the helmets did some helmets uh, as well i looked them up they they're still in existence and they're like the leading name in mine safety appliances <laughs> so there you have it cool piece of uh, history from my brother. Uh, still to come on the Knife Junkie podcast, we're going to take a look at uh, state of the collection. Like I said, I'm reunited with some uh, some childhood weapons, and uh, we're going to take a look at Paul Munko's new design from Kaiser. Looks really cool right here on the Knife Junkie podcast. If you're a knife junkie, you're always in the market for a new knife, and we've got you covered. For the latest weekly knife deals, be sure to visit the knifejunkie.com slash knives. Through our special affiliate relationships, we bring you weekly knife specials on your favorite knives. Help support the show and save money on a new knife. Shop at thenifejunkie.com slash knives. That's thenifejunkie.com slash knives. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. If you like that cyborg, Jack, I just saw it in that last ad. I think they have it there. Check it out. I, but why? <laughs> the reason I say I think is because these things sell out fast. So if you like the cyborg, Jack, go check that out. All right. So from Paul Munko. Now, he's the guy. He's a graphic artist. And uh, he designed his first knife for Kaiser Knives, the Clip Point Comet. Really cool little bolster lock. Uh, knife. Well, he has a new knife. Uh, it's a new design in the prototype phase for Kaiser, and uh, it is called the Clairvoyant, and it is cool. It is a beautiful knife. So this is a sheep's foot, uh, 3.6 inch, so very different from uh, what, what we saw with the Comet. Uh, you have uh, S35VN, most likely. This is still in prototype phase, uh, but you have this beautiful sculpted uh, carbon fiber handle that nestles into um, 
I mean, carbon fiber, what do you call it? Uh, scales. Excuse me, it's been a week. <laughs> scales that nestle nicely into those titanium bolsters on top of that liner. Uh, really nice uh, liner lock. And it's got the deep hollow grind, which I love. A nice sweeping belly. And a, a I got to say, an attractive profile. You know, I'm always looking at the looks of a knife. And now here it is uh, next to the Comet. So substantially larger. I think that Comet is a beautiful knife and deserves an XL version. Kaiser, are you listening? Uh, but I love this, uh, this new Clairvoyant. The handle reminds me a little bit of that CJRB. I can't remember what it's called. Uh, Crag, maybe. Uh, not in any way other than uh, that sort of curve. Uh, but the thing that's also attractive about this knife is it's a bolster lock or a, um, uh, a thingy thing. Oh my God. We're not going to cut that. I just said thingy thing. Um, button lock. It is not a liner lock. It's a button lock. And that is something uh, that's very attractive to me. Uh, seeing as this is a new form that people are coming out with and, and just all these companies are just coming out with so many of these button lock knives. But Kaiser was one of the first uh, with their Tangram series, uh, they had that that cool little aluminum button lock. So they've been they've had this dialed in for years. I don't know why they've been sleeping on it. Uh, uh, but the new Big Lighter and and all these um, all these new Kaiser button locks have proven they know what they're doing. So I'm looking forward to seeing it on this new Clairvoyant, a gorgeous knife from uh, graphic designer Paul Munko. Uh, next up, Poltergeist Works uh, is doing another collaboration with Real Steel. And I love these collaborations. I love the Pol Poltergeist, um, uh, Pol Poltergeist Works designs in general. Always have. That's Jacob, and I can never pronounce his last name, uh, from Poland. Really, really nice looking knives with a with a real distinct look. This new one has something that's very interesting. It's called the Sacra, and it and it has their version of the Axis Lock, the ambidextrous slide lock. Uh, but in this case, it's got a folded over backspacer, a folded spine integral uh, backspacer. So the whole frame is built on a folded piece of steel. We've seen this before, uh, but usually it's been highlighted in such a way uh, that you don't have scales and, and it's very obvious what you're looking at. In this case, uh, you look at the knife and you see a domed crowned spine, uh, basically that sits proud of the, of the micarta scales. Uh, and yet when you look at it, it's all one piece. I would imagine this makes this knife sound really cool, but um, I don't know, that's, that's to be seen. Uh, you're going to get a lot of strength out of this setup, and it's it's a great way to make an integral integral that is uh, less expensive than milling it out of a slab of titanium. Uh, this is in K110, which is analogous to D2, so good edge retention and toughness. Maybe not so uh, maybe not so uh, corrosion resistant. Coming in right at uh, 2.5 ounces. This thing is going to be 99 bucks. And by the way, it has a beautiful blade profile that reminds me a little bit of a uh, Bill Harsey design. Uh, so keep a lookout for the Real Steel Sacra from Poltergeist Works and uh, Real Steel. Uh, coming up on the Knife Junkie podcast, we're going to take a look at the state of the collection, uh, the Vostid Raccoon. Really like this new uh, EDC. And then we're going to look at the Thanksgiving road trip knives uh before we get there i just want to remind you if you like the show and you want to help support it you can do so on patreon uh, we have three tiers of support and uh, you can win a knife every month you can uh, get exclusive interview extras and other cool stuff cool materials uh just go to the knife junkie.com slash patreon and check it out or zap the qr code on the screen again that's the knife junkie.com slash patreon the Get Upside app is your way to get cash back on your gas purchases. Get Upside is an app you put on your smartphone, and whenever you need to get gas, search your area for savings, claim your discount, fill up your tank, and then take a picture of the receipt with your phone. And that's it. You've just got cash back. Visit theknifejunkie.com forward slash save on gas to get the app and start saving. Again, that's theknifejunkie.com slash save on gas. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. 
Well, knowing how much I love the Bellamy and the Nightshade, Vostid sent me their new EDC. This is the Raccoon. And yeah, I dig this one too. Uh, this is a beautiful spear point um, EDC on a button lock platform that just works like a dream. It really, really is a nice knife. Um, it has really good uh, button lock action. I do find that the button lock is pretty low set to the handle. And uh, at first it turned me off a little bit because it took ever so uh, just a slight bit extra effort to make sure that that button was all the way in. But in use, especially in cardboard, especially when um, choking up onto this platform here, uh, cutting through cardboard, I have found that having this button deeper inset, first of all, it sits in a little well that's milled out of the micarta and it's a low slung button it's a great it's a great way to have it uh because i have noticed on my beg lighter xl a, a knife that i absolutely love and no longer own i'll tell you about that in a minute uh i have found that when i choked up on that knife i was able to disengage the lock accidentally um however the the setup of it with the choil and the flipper tab make it so that it's not going to fold on you, but it's just something I noticed. In this case, with this setup, knowing that people are going to come up onto that shelf, uh, it's it's a good design uh, good design option. Now, this is a uh, budget blade from Vostid, 14C28N, great blade steel, uh, thin blade stock with a really nice, almost all the way to the top, flat grind. This thing slices like crazy. It is excellent, and I called it a spear point. If you hold it up or just hold it up to the sky, which is how I like to analyze the profile of, of a blade, or you look at it here while it's all uh, brightly reflective, you can see that it's not exactly symmetrical top to bottom. Uh, but that that point is right down the center line, and the belly matches the spine enough that I'm gonna I'm gonna call it a spear point. I'm gonna take that liberty. I like how the uh, blade is wide in comparison to the handle because it gives you a lot of clearance when you're holding the knife back here and cutting against a surface. Um, in this choked up position, you get a, a great angle to the blade and, a, and you know, you're right up there nice and close. Uh, I like that. But when you're back here, yeah, you get all of this, uh, all of this blade that you can be using on a surface without contacting your fingers. A uh, really nice micarta. I believe it also comes in G10. Um, I like that they have a spacer, a filler tab for the milled in pocket that accommodates the uh, the pocket clip that goes either either way, obviously. I got to say that pocket clip is not too generous in terms of room, but it is in a, it's inset in a notch in the micarta and it is also um, has those flat screws. So it is pretty, um, it's a pretty shallow space there to accommodate your pockets, but it does, at least you're not having to deal with the screws. Let's put it that way. Um, yeah, but on big, thick tactical pants, if you have big, or, or not even tactical pants, but like work pants, like Carhartts that have the reinforced, uh, that might be a bit of an issue. Great action, outstanding action. Uh, an interesting, uh, the thumb stud feels far from the pivot, uh, but that sort of accelerates the opening. Um, to me, it feels like once it releases from the detent, it's just rocketing open. Um, so a great knife for fidget, certainly a great knife for work. One, two, three and a quarter inches. So it's right in that... Uh, EDC sort of magical zone. Um, I recommend this knife. I really like this knife. Uh, and I've used it quite a bit. Uh, I find it, I, I kind of find it a responsibility when people uh, send me knives and tell me to keep them uh, and to do reviews on them that I have to actually use them. I can't like squirrel them away and um, like I do with some of the knives I spend my own money on. Uh, so that is the Vostid Knives Raccoon. And it's my third Vosti knife, uh, knife. And I think they're, or no, it's my fourth because I also have the chef's knife. And I think they make outstanding knives. At this point, they've proven, 
certainly proven more than proven themselves to me. Um, so this raccoon is a charming, uh, charming and uh, very useful knife. And I find it charming because it's a weird name. Raccoon doesn't look like a raccoon. It's just kind of a random uh, name, but I love it. OK, uh, next up, I've been talking about how I was reunited with um, uh, childhood weapons. Now, let me just uh, say quickly what I mean. Uh, my parents is, have always, um, you know, uh, spent th their money on themselves extravagantly in travel. Uh, in instead of like living in a big house and all that kind of stuff, they they always chose uh, to travel to cool and exotic places, and they always brought us back. Like ever since I think it was their first trip to like South America when we were when my brother and I were really little, uh, and they brought us back uh, little headhunter knives <laughs> made out of wood. Uh, from that moment forth, they were never allowed to travel without returning with weapons, uh, you know, uh, endemic to the places they were going or, or is that the right word? You know what I mean? That come from the places they were they were going to. So in 1983, they went to South Africa. And they did not disappoint. They returned with a uh, with a bow and uh, and a whole hunters thing that I'm going to show some some other time. Uh, but they also returned with this Zulu War Club. Now, this Zulu War Club was in our TV room growing up, and uh, we had this really cool room that my parents redid, and, and the whole inner surface of it was um, very flammable now that I think about it, but it was all, uh, it was uh, paneled with wood from a reclaimed barn, and and it was a cool room, and we used to shoot arrows into the wall. They didn't know about that, but uh, this this used to hang out in that room, and whenever you know, I was home alone. This was the weapon that accompanied me. It is a heavy piece of wood. I'm not sure what kind of wood it is. It's got this beautiful flared uh, pommel or puño, I guess you would call it on this, with that knurling crosshatch uh, section to grab onto. And then you can see up here, it's all one piece. I guess it's a burl, maybe. Um, and they carved this big noggin knocker on it. It's a nice, heavy wooden sphere. And um, this was one of the pieces uh, that I reclaimed in the pre-mortem uh, attic clearing. Um, you know, my parents don't want to, <laughs> my parents are basically like, take it now or take it later. <laughs> so I took it now. Um, but look at this thing. Uh, it is it is nasty. And I have a... Um, I have a new war club coming from Wingard Wearables. So I'm happy to have this uh, back in the stable or, or in the stable for the first time. It's going to have to go on the wall. I have a lot of stuff to go on this wall. It, it might get crowded. It might start looking like uh, that movie, uh, Knives Out. Zulu War Club. Very happy to have it back in, in my possession. Now, uh, next up was my brother's birthday gift for me this past year, but we didn't connect. And he said, I'll give it to you at Thanksgiving. And I forgot all about it. And he's like, oh, Bob. And he grabbed this. Now, this is wrapped in saran wrap uh, because it has some delicate pieces that I have to fix on the scabbard. But my brother got me this amazing Moro Barong just kind of like exactly like almost exactly like the one on the wall. Um, but this one has an exquisite detail that I have to show off under the knife cam. This handle, uh, which is a traditional barong handle. Hey, let me bring this up here. Let's get some focus, which is made of wood. And, uh, and then the ferrule is made of some sort of metal. I'm not sure. But this one is completely encased in this woven um, and woven and I don't know, saddled or, or uh, wire. So it's it's you can see that it's completely surrounded in wire so that when in battle, it's not going to come apart. Now, I've never seen this before on any other barong. And I'd love it if someone who knows about Filipino swords or weapons would chime in. Uh, but it is amazing. It is so intricate. And you can see how it goes down both sides, it splits here, goes down both sides, wraps around, crosses back here. And this handle is, is not only held together with whatever that resin is that they, it's, it's the tang of the barong is, is hot 
and it's burned into the handle and there's also some sort of tree sap resin in there and then this ferrule locks it in that's the mechanical connection and then in this case it's all held in with this uh wire so it is really unique really exquisite and uh i want to know if anyone out there has seen this or has a barong like this um very very cool so this was most likely a world war ii uh bring back gi bring back but this is uh this saran wrap is holding in the the um this I'm not sure what the material is, but it's some sort of reed that's wrapped around the sheath that holds the two wooden pieces together that make up the scabbard. I'll show you the blade. That beautiful leaf shape. Uh, this one has some corrosion and and uh, some, some uh, dings in the edge as if it's been hit against another blade. Uh, most likely, I would. Uh, my intuition says that that's not. Those are not combat scars. My intuition tells me that this has been in many hands since World War II, and uh, probably at somewhere along the line, someone banged it against someone else's sword, and they were probably playing. Um, I don't know, but I really dig this. Thank you, Victor. There's some serious corrosion on this blade that I have to uh, deal with, and I will deal with uh, post haste. Don't want this one to go to waste. Okay, and last up, these are a bunch of exotic weapons I got here this time. Um, last up in the state of the collection. Sorry, I'm having a crisis. Here we go. Okay. All right, last up in the state of the collection. As I mentioned, my parents love to travel, and uh, they're, my dad is a collector of countries, so to speak. He's got a a pretty impressive list. He's been to 126 countries now. And uh, this was the 126th, and that's Saudi Arabia. And he went to a um, market. I can't remember what they're called, but he went to like a bazaar and uh, asked someone uh, in his tour group or the, the people who was who were guiding them around where you could buy the best knives. And uh, he was taken to this place and he bought this. And it is really cool it's a jambaya it's a large one and it's got the belt attached i have another jambaya um from uh oman i believe and uh, it also has the belt attached and it's over on my wall uh, but this one is amazing because it's mounted sort of quote unquote aftermarket uh, but a long time ago i'm going to take this this uh, sticker off but it was mounted horizontally either for scout carry or for diagonal over the shoulder carry uh, but it's mounted on there with wire and leather and uh, it's really cool how the belt the orientation of the blade to the belt sort of our western scout carry and an amazing thing this velvet on the back of the belt smells like incense because it's been sitting in rooms with incense for a hundred years or however this is an old pretty old blade I'll show you the blade. Now, there's that handle with that uh, sort of um, signature uh, handle shape with those three knobs. Now, presumably, those knobs are what mount the blade in there, but I'm not sure. Now, the blade is very long. Here, I'm going to hold it up in front of the main camera. Uh, the blade is very long and double-edged, and it's pretty sharp. Uh, where is it? It's pretty sharp right in the sweet spots up here uh, but most of it's dull uh, but right up right up in the in the tip area in the belly it's it's pretty good a nice polish i can feel a little bit of rattle in the blade to the handle as can be expected there's some cracks in the wood and um I, i'd like to find out more about how this was mounted because it doesn't seem like this this is not two pieces of wood put together uh, this is slid in there somehow, but the slot, I, I'm curious about how they milled out that slot. Uh, but just a really beautiful blade that was no doubt uh, carried on, on the daily. I don't know if it was used for what it was used for, uh, but I would imagine that it's a, uh, a status marker. I mean, the size, of, this is a pretty big one. I'm pretty sure that that was some sort of a status marker. But since the handle is not that ornate, I wonder if this was actually. Oh, a war weapon or a weapon that was 
used less for um, ceremony and less for walking around and and showing off your status, but more for use because the blade isn't very ornate and the handle isn't very ornate. It it seems like it might be, I don't know, maybe actually used as a weapon. Um, I don't know. And then beautiful ornate sheath. So my exotic ethnographic weapon collection grows. It is large and getting larger. And to me, that's a part of this uh, knife collecting hobby that is so fascinating is to have something that has a history so much richer and longer than my own and to have it in my possession and know that it will most likely, you know, it will be in someone else's possession in the future. You know, um, even, even these weapons that are made of natural materials and uh, definitely not super steel, um, they've lasted this long. They will last longer than I last. And um, yeah, these little bits of history are important. And and even the ones we collect today are going to be collector's items someday. These are going to be in antique stores uh, in, you know, 2130. All right. Uh, enough waxing poetic about that. That is the state of the collection. And the state of the collection is strong. All right. We're going to move on to the Thanksgiving road trip knives. Now, I just went on a road trip to Ohio, as you know, and uh, visited my parents and brother and my sister came. It was great uh, to have the whole family together and celebrate Thanksgiving. And I was like, this time I don't need to travel with too much. Uh, and I ended up traveling with quite a bit because there were some things I wanted to show my brother. There were some things I wanted to show my dad and uh, some things I wanted to have along with me to 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 just test out. And it's always fun to get other people's opinions about like non knife people's opinions about knives. Now I'm not going to show those knives because I've been talking about them a lot recently, but what I am going to show you are the knives that I brought for my carry and usage and the ones that I, I brought to show off to my brother. Okay. So first off, every road trip is uh, only complete if I'm carrying the SOCOM elite, the Microtech SOCOM elite was my first S35 VN knife. It was my first knife with a glass breaker and uh, just a uh, precious piece in my collection and always, always goes in the pocket, front right pocket on a road trip. Now, at this point, I've become superstitious about it. Uh, you know, so this was on me and this is a great, great knife. This has done a lot of different things uh, as a road trip knife. Uh, it is it has cut waffles very very precisely. It has uh, opened uh, oil, uh, you know that foil on top of oil canisters. It has done uh, it's done a lot of pretty and ugly chores, but it has really maintained. And uh, it, it was also my first bearing knife. Uh, this knife is on bearings and was on bearings long before most knives uh, that now boast the feature. This is a 2013 version, and uh, and incidentally, I think the most beautiful version of the Microtech Tonto out there. Love this grind. Uh, wish they kept it, but the new one looks cool too. Um, so let me put this down here. That's the Microtech SOCOM Elite. When I say the new one, uh, it's not that new now, but it's newer than that. Okay, next up is also a Tonto. I had my Chris Reeve Knives Umnums on, on me, and I, this was my Thanksgiving carry knife. Um, you know, Thanksgiving, even though it's at my parents, and we chill hard, you know, except for my mother, who's always on her feet moving around. Um, she kind of refuses to sit and relax, <laughs> and uh, she's always, you know, cooking and making stuff and um, taking care of everyone. And um, so for Thanksgiving dinner, I don't want to just show up in sweatpants and a T-shirt. So I always, you know, we always kind of dress up, not dress up, but look nice. And I figured that should extend to my uh, to my front right pocket carry. So I carried my Chris Reeve knives um, umnums on. So I'd be ready for any sort of tactical issue that might come up at Thanksgiving dinner, say if we were invaded. Uh, but knowing that that's not going to happen. I just have a real classy knife sitting in my pocket. 
I love this thing. And I was showing it off. Uh, my brother and father are both Tonto lovers. My brother and I got into the Tonto Tanto uh, argument, uh, which I have changed positions on uh, since last we spoke. And uh, I was like a non-smoker talking to a f uh, smoker, you know. Uh, you should stop that. And uh, he loved it. My dad loved it too. They like the unique sort of wedge tip of the Chris Reeve knives, uh, Tontos, as do I. So the Umnumzan was my Thanksgiving carry knife. Love that thing. So this is one that I brought because I'm just, I'm, this is one of my favorite knives, I got to say. One of my, one of my favorite knives ever. And I think I have to get its brother. They, they have another version of this knife out. This is the Resco Instruments Gooseworks uh, Mekong Delta Combat Folder. <laughs> That's a mouthful. The M, I just call it the Mekong Delta Combat Folder and skip the Resco Instruments Gooseworks part. This sucker is beautiful. It has much the same profile and handle as the 0640 from Zero Tolerance, just kind of uh, beefed up a little bit. It's got that beautiful drop point blade and quite an obtuse angle, but it's very sharp and uh, hard use for sure. It's got incredible um, washer action. Look at this fall shut washer action. Now it's not drop shut uh, guillotine action, and I wouldn't want that on this knife, but you can also uh, front flip it. It is an incidental front flipper or accidental front flipper. And uh, yeah, this thing is one of my all-time favorites at this point. I carry it all the time. Made by Best Tech and uh, designed by former Navy SEAL, Navy SEALs, or they call themselves frogmen. So I think they're uh, maybe SEALs from a different era and just a beautiful knife. I love this big giant um, pivot and I like how it is the... Uh, the over travel stop for the lock bar really really uh textured blasted titanium finish that i really like uh because it uh, snail trails nicely and it has that feeling that a lot of people don't like uh that you get on blasted aluminum you know most um most protec knives have that feel that sort of almost chalky feel well you get that in spades on this version of the mekong delta combat folder now it also comes now in a hollow ground bolster lock version, which I'm like, oh man. All right, so now I have to go get that. Um, but it's probably worth selling a couple that I don't carry to get that because I carry this knife all the time. Okay, next up, the Spyderco Yojumbo. Just a great utility slash tactical knife. I put utility first because let's be honest, most people will use this for that. Uh, Utility because it's got that down point, uh, that low point, that straight edge. You can do all sorts of utility uh, work with this, cuts with this. Uh, clear from the knuckle because of the width of the blade. You got the hollow ground blade, very, very sharp, um, ergonomic, comfortable, fun to use due to that uh, compression lock. Just a great great knife uh s35 vn is the blade steel on this one i know you can get it in 90 i believe s90 v also and uh, some some uh dressed up versions from from different purveyors i do love the hollow grind on this it's it's uh probably well it's okay so this was designed as a tactical knife to go into softer targets um with that thin hollow grind um but I would like to say that I think that this would be outstanding for utility. I don't really put it in that category or press it into that use. I have enough other things that I, I, I just, uh, I'm not going to use it for that most likely. Um, and then I have the deep carry MXG gear clip on it, sanded down the G10 underneath it because it is pretty, pretty textured there. And uh, yeah, love this thing. And I do love flipping it and closing it and flipping it and closing it and driving those around me batty with it. Had to have a folding Bowie on me um, due to this Bowie phase I'm in, and so I brought the CQC 13 from Emerson Knives. Man, alive do I love this knife. This one got passed around the, the uh, dining room table and uh, oud and odd over. Um, 
not at Thanksgiving. My mother wouldn't have that. But this was uh, really loved for how it looks, for the ergonomics, and for these Tom Engelson handles. Uh, that's Vantage, uh, Vantage Blade Works. It does awesome aftermarket handle scales for Emerson's and other knives, specializing in Emerson's, but he does beautiful work on other knives. I've, I've had a batch of things to send him forever now, and, and I keep not sending it. I got to send it out. He's going to do a special job on uh, on my cold steel four inch tie light, Chris. And I want to put some put some Python um, micarta on that knife and uh, really, really, you know, let that blade shine. The handle on that one is so cheesy. But on this one, uh, my father commented on how smooth the locking and unlocking was. And it made me chuckle because, yeah, it is smooth now, but every Emerson knife I've ever had has forced me through this very difficult adolescent phase uh, with the lock where it sticks and you're like, this is never going to turn out. And then eventually it's super smooth and cool. And hopefully uh, that's a good analogy for the teenage years, uh, which are swiftly uh, oncoming in this household. And um <clears throat> Hopefully it all ends up smooth, <laughs> even though it will be a difficult go, no doubt. Okay, I shouldn't speak that into existence. It will be a, an easy peasy. Having two teenage girls will be easy and fun. That's what I'm going to say. All right, Emerson uh, really did the job for the Bowie, but what did I have for my uh, deeply hollow ground Spanto? Um, well category uh, of course it was the hinderer xm18 uh, with my reground um with my reground sponto blade such a beautiful knife um razor razor edge cutlery is who did re uh, reground this what a what an awesome design the sponto blade is and then to have it have it come all super thick and thick behind the edge like it comes from the factory well i just I just had Josh at Razor Edge just pull out all the grinds and make it really thinly hollow ground. He redid the swedge, that front. It is razor sharp, like uh, like the name of his business. And I didn't carry this one uh, that whole time. I did open and flip it. Beautiful aftermarket micarta scales. These are hinderer scales. That that burgundy micarta was, if you look at the very tip of the handle, it's kind of lighter at the back. It was all very light until uh, I used this to cut ribs <laughs> in a pinch. I usually, when I barbecue, I, I like to have an XL cold steel because it's got the reach. And if I need to cut something, you know, I'm not I'm not too in the heat. And this is what I had on me. And I had to, I don't remember what the emergency was, but I had to cut into a big piece of rib pork and it squirted juice onto this part of the handle. And ever since then, even though I took it apart and cleaned it and everything, it's like the pork juice has like has immigrated up the handle and or migrated, I'm sorry, up the handle. And the whole thing has gotten dark. I think it looks beautiful, but I also know the cause of it. And I've rubbed it down with alcohol. It's like I don't want it to get rancid. You know, I don't want the knife to smell. So I rubbed it down with alcohol in an attempt to, uh, you know, alleviate that possibility and also lighten the micarta a little. And uh to no avail. It doesn't smell or anything like that, uh, but it didn't lighten the micarta. So I think, I think the spirit of the beast is now inhabiting the micarta on this knife. Next up, I brought this home to impress my bro, and and uh, uh, I don't think I got to that. Um, I don't think I got to show him this. Uh, there were. I'll, I'll tell you why in a minute. But um, so this, of course, is the uh, night elements. Um, MK Ultra. Uh, since, th well, this was manufactured by Fox. Uh, so now it is the Fox Knight MK Ultra. It's not uh, released through Elements anymore, Tactical Elements. Uh, but when I got this, it was such a great knife. Um, I, I, this is one of my favorite folders. This has proven to be one of my favorite folders. It was also a Christmas gift from my wife a few years back. Perfect handle shape. This is, uh, you know, basically. Uh, if you know Jason Knight's kukris, uh, forged kukris, they're so beautiful. This basically is a folding version. You know, he's modernized or, or westernized or changed the blades a little bit and put those that big fuller in it. But to me, this is the quintessential 
Folden, Kukri, even more so than the Raja from Cold Steel. I think this is just, I don't know, just perfect because it hits the perfect blade to handle ratio. You got an outstanding curve. You've got the point slightly, well, you got the point where the point would be on a Kukri lower than center line, but it comes in handy for a, uh, a thrust without having to change your wrist um, orientation or any, anything like that. And the fit and finish in the, of this is just great. It's a Fox knives knife. And it's one of the ones that they definitely, I don't know if they spent, take special attention on some knives, but this one just feels, uh, you know, super, super nice titanium frame lock. And this is N690 CO as Fox is one to do. All right. I'm going to put this down here. Love that knife. Uh, Nice big full size blade. Look at that next to the uh, next to the uh, XM18. Big big blade. Next up, this was my food knife. Uh, the uh, for this trip, and that's the Jack Wolf knives Benny's clip. This has become my favorite little steak knife, and uh, uh, and by little I'm I mean I'm apt to be carrying this knife often, and uh, so this gets pulled out for food quite a bit, but. Uh, if if I'm if I know I'm going out for dinner and I'm I'm gearing up for a nice steak or or chop or something, I will get a larger knife. Uh, but this knife here uh, has filled in so many times. I brought this on purpose to be my food knife. Uh, love this thing, the Benny's clip. It's the one Jack Wolf knives knife that is not fully hollow ground. It's not a full height hollow grind. It's about a two thirds height hollow grind and still wicked sharp, wicked uh, thin behind the edge and just just a beautiful, beautiful blade. Love this thing. And that cyborg jack that I was showing off before really kind of has some of the same elements in blade shape, uh, at least in the profile. Now in the grinds and 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 what have you, it's a, it's a different situation, but um, I like that he has um, another knife that that has a similar blade ergonomics on this just butter you know very neutral and this is the largest of the jack wolf knives i believe and um yeah probably makes me feel like it's the most capable but they are so all so well made that you know they're probably all equally capable all right next uh i had i went with my big lighter xl but my brother uh, well, he, he had a little emergency hospital visit. And so when I went to visit him, I gave him the big lighter. I was like, you're in this hospital, you know, you left in the dead of night. He, he, he went without a knife. Um, I had a little talking to about him, you know, about that, but he didn't have a knife on him. And so I gave him my big lighter. So I no longer own this knife, but I went with it. The big lighter XL, such a great button lock. I, I love that thing. Mine was uh, red linen micarta and uh, that full height uh, grind so nice and with the um, with the spear point. I'm speaking wistfully like, oh, we spent some good time together that knife. Uh, but I showed him how to annoy uh, my, my sister in law uh, by flicking it open and using, you know, really, really pushing the button lock to its annoying potential. And uh, boy, he got that right away because. He's good at that. All right. Next up is the Cold Steel XL Voyager. I brought the um, drop point version. Uh, this one reminds me a lot of that Barong blade uh, from that sword I was just showing you. And I wouldn't be surprised if Lynn Thompson was uh, inspired uh, by the Barong in making this as he is a Filipino martial arts uh, expert. And uh, definitely, I'm sure he's got a million Barongs in his personal collection as well as producing them. Uh, so I brought this along, um, only used it for a my my Thanksgiving uh, short video, stabbed it into a tree impressively. Uh, no, really the impressiveness was my daughter's uh, uh, camera work. We, we worked that out a little bit. She's she's getting to be a pretty da darn good camera camera girl. And uh, my younger daughter is 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 going to be moving into a similar position. She'll be the first AC. That's assistant camera. All right. Next up on me at pretty much every moment this whole week and since i got it uh until today since uh when i swapped out uh, the voodoo is my ruffian 
from Hogtooth. Uh, perfect sheath, I'll show you that. Perfect sheath shipping with the concealed uh, concepts there. Uh, 154CM hollow ground clip point gentleman's carry Bowie knife. Uh, nice long swedge. You might call that a harpoon. I don't. Uh, it's got nice jimping there and a perfect place to rest your thumb in the saber grip. Really, really nice ergonomics on that handle. And then the Anzo pattern coming all the way uh, to about uh, to within one fifth of the end gives it a feeling in cross section like there's a ball at the end that you can grab onto. Like it, 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 ah, it, it just gives you such a positive grip. It feels very good in hand and gives you a very positive grip in that uh, reverse. Uh, this one is a truly custom knife in that uh, I, well, in that I selected the handle scales and um, liner material when I was at uh, his shop in August, in Matt Chase's shop in August. Uh, the Tonto that I carry by him is not technically custom because it was already made when I bought it. It was just perfect that way and I bought it that way. But uh, this one is of, of my own. Um, choosing now this micarta i don't believe it's antique but it looks like uh, antique westinghouse I, you know i'll have to ask matt and make sure just a beautiful trusty knife it's got a good weight and it's about as large as i go in terms of uh, edcing a fixed blade now this next one i tried to edc is just too much and that is the zabo uh express this one i have uh discovered is great in cm carry which is in the belt downward at an angle to be to be drawn in reverse grip but let me show you the knife uh, this was another one i brought home to show off to my brother knowing that he would like this this is a double-edged fighter i call it a fighter it's not a dagger because that blade is not symmetrical uh you got a, a different curves in both areas, but just, just, oh man, a great knife. This comes with a, a single edge version or a double edge version. Of course, I opted for the double, uh, even though it's, I'm, you know, it's legality is uh, questionable in certain jurisdictions, perhaps my own. Uh, but who would know the way the knife law is written? It's written to confound you. Um, but great handle, just like I said, just a little bit too long for EDC. If you see it next to the, uh, if you see it next to the hog tooth, you'll see what I mean. Now this one, like the hog tooth is also 154 CM. It's a great, right? Yeah. It's a great blade steel, uh, for, for EDC fixed blades because it's, uh, it's very good on the corrosion resistance on the easy to sharpen and maintains a good edge front but is also pretty darn corrosion resistant. And if it's next to your body um, and just either you're sweating and it's it's getting direct uh, or you're just being a human and, you know, uh, you know, uh, water is coming out of your pores uh, in a uh, vapor type way. It's not going to boy. Are you impressed by my scientific talk here? Uh, it's not going to be so hard on the knife like. Uh, some of the EDC uh, 1095 blades from tops that I've carried that I've had, like the felony stop that I have to, on after a summer's day, have to polish down the edge because the edge is already taken on corrosion. Love the 154 CM. Okay, next up uh, was the Wingard wearables back ripper. You know, I'm not, I'm not traveling anymore without a tomahawk. And this has been my travel tomahawk. Now I have one in the car, a Schrade. Uh, that you know that I can beat up on, but but that's for that's for uh, you, you know utility. This one is for self protection. So gotta have the uh, Wingard wearables back ripper on me. This is a great travel one because it's so light and it fits in my uh, LL Bean duffel bag just perfectly um, without uh, without reaching either end. Uh, it's nice and light, but it's so very capable in not only in in the uh, self defense ways. Uh, that I always, you know, think about. But uh, also, I know people use it for gardening. People use it for utility in a lot of different ways. I don't have it for gardening, but I'm not just saying. I'm just saying it's not just strictly a weapon. Next up, I brought my um, Cold Steel Trailmaster, uh, one of my most used knives of all time. 
And one of my oldest knives of all time, this is about 27 years old. Uh, I usually say 25 because that's a round number. But in doing the math, I, I'm pretty sure this is 27 years old. And uh, this is Carbon V. And uh, where was this made? I think this was made in Japan. Oh, no, this one was made in the USA. So very old. Um, but I brought this one home because my dad has one that he got maybe 15 years ago. And his was made in China. Uh, it's got a coated blade. And so I just wanted to compare them. I put up a short uh, this past week that compared the blades. I, his is awesome. Uh, I've changed the profile of mine through use and sharpening. And uh, his his is pristine. And man, I just love the knife. I love the Trailmaster. And I think if anyone, if, if you're if you're ever going to get just one Bowie knife, I would I would. I'd be remiss if I didn't say the Trailmaster is probably your best bet. It might not be the fanciest, craziest looking, but man, it is probably the best one I have for all around use. And when I hold it in my hand and I John Wick with it, it is very lively. All right. Last up, this was the last one to, to bring to show off to my bro is the 1917 uh, Bowie by Cold Steel. I'll just continue up here because it's so large. Uh, this has a uh, 11 and a half inch blade, right? Oh, no, 12 and a quarter. Oh, yeah, 12 and a quarter inch blade, 1075. This is made by Windless Cutlery in, uh, in India, who also makes the Wild West Bowie or Bowie, Wild West Bowie, and a couple of other uh, knives and swords for cold steel windless is known for their quality especially among the reenactment set who who buy historic weapons um they make a lot of uh, different historic weapons and do it beautifully uh so this one here is a very impressive knife it's a full tang true full tang well actually it's not true full tang because it doesn't come all the way up here but uh similar to say a randall knife it's a slotted you know, so the tang comes up this way and the the blade, it's exposed on the bottom, but the handle just kind of fits on top and they put the screws in. So very, very, very solid and uh, fun to use. I love that giant S guard. And uh, this one really makes you want to fight like it's a saber. I mean, fight, you know, when you're swinging it around, uh, it makes you want to use sort of saber techniques. This was made to be the um, companion piece to the the saber, much like the one on the wall behind you, uh, behind me, uh, that Cold Steel makes. I think that's the 1918 saber. So I'm going to put this down and I'm going to say thank you so much for uh, joining me today. Uh, I, I'm not going to rattle off all those Thanksgiving knives. I can't believe I had 15 knives. And I know that in my bag, in my backpack, you know, they're the knives that are always there. So they were there too. And I had a couple of others to show people. So, I mean, I can't, I can't make a move without bringing a whole bunch of knives. Uh, do you know what I'm talking about? Do you travel the same way? Do let me know in the comments below. And uh, also uh, remember to uh, keep your eyes peeled for Thursday night knives tomorrow night and the Sunday interview podcast, man, I'm out of breath. So for Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Mm -hmm.